the foundation of feeling. There's a moment after the first inhale when the room seems to take a breath with you. Edges soften, sound stretches, attention loosens its grip. That shift isn't the plant forcing something foreign into your system. It's your system recognizing a language it already speaks. Cannabis doesn't overpower, it fits. That fit lives inside the endocannabinoid system, ECS, a network of receptors, lipid messengers, and enzymes that helps keep internal conditions steady when life pulls you off center. Long before anyone grew a plant, your body was releasing its own cannabinoids, anandamide, bliss, and 2 to ag to fine-tune mood, stress reactivity, appetite, sleep, and pain signaling. Enzymes like FAAH and MAEG L clear those signals once the job's done. Cannabis works because its compounds resemble those internal messengers closely enough to join the conversation. Two receptors do the heavy lifting, CB1 and CB2. CB1 is dense throughout the brain and nervous system, areas shaping perception, memory, coordination, and emotion. When cannabinoids engage CB1, they modulate how other neurotransmitters, dopamine, serotonin, GABA, glutamate, are released, changing how information flows rather than simply turning it up or down. CB2 shows up mainly on immune cells and peripheral tissues, gut, skin, even bone, where it helps tune inflammatory tone and recovery signals. When people describe a body high or a sense of physical ease, you're feeling that peripheral conversation finding homeostasis again. THC interacts with these sites as a partial agonist. It activates receptors, but not to their maximum. That matters. Instead of smashing one switch, THC nudges multiple circuits, and your baseline state decides where it lands. Walk in calm and supported, and CB1 modulation can feel like curiosity, presence, and creativity. Arrive tense or overstimulated, and the same dose may pull energy inward, slow the spin, or, if pushed too far, tip into edginess. The ECS is a feedback system. Context is chemistry's co-pilot. Other compounds shape that signal. CBD can act as a negative allosteric modulator at CB1. Loosely, it makes the receptor a little harder for THC to overdrive, often softening the too much, too fast edge. CBG is frequently described by consumers as stabilizing, while THCV can trim appetite, and in some contexts, blunt THC's reach. Then there are terpenes, the aromatic molecules that give cultivars their nose and feel. Limonene is often associated with uplift and cognitive brightness, pinene with mental clarity and keeping recall intact, myrcene with heaviness and ease of onset, linalool with quieting, settling tones. They don't cause single effects on their own. They bias the direction THC's modulation takes. The ECS also uses retrograde signaling. Postsynaptic neurons send messages backward to the presynaptic side to regulate release. That's why cannabis can feel like it's adjusting the pattern of thoughts and sensations rather than simply amplifying them. People describe time dilation, deeper texture in music, or attention moving from spotlight to floodlight. Not because THC adds something new, but because it reweights which signals get through. Put together, CB1 shapes the feel of mind, CB2 shapes the feel of body, and cultivar chemistry decides how much of each you hear. Two flowers with the same THC percentage can deliver opposite experiences because their arrangements differ. Different terpene spreads, different minor cannabinoids, different ratios steering the same receptor family along different routes. Potency is the volume. Receptors decide the song. That is the ground truth for everything we teach next. Cannabis effect isn't a straight line from milligrams to strong. It's a dynamic exchange between your physiology, your setting, and the plant's composition. An ongoing dialogue that explains why the same joint can help one person paint and help another finally exhale. Why the same flower feels different to everybody. Every bowl, joint, or vapor draw begins a negotiation between the plant and the person. Cannabis doesn't impose its identity. It responds to the one you already carry. The endocannabinoid system acts less like a, a single circuit 
and more like a living climate, shifting with diet, sleep, stress, and time. Each body has its own weather, and cannabinoids move through that weather differently. Individual chemistry decides the starting temperature. Some people's systems hum with higher baseline levels of anandamide and 2 to AG, their receptors already partially engaged before THC ever arrives. When those receptors are active, adding more stimulation can feel jagged or overstimulating. Others run low, with receptors hungry for contact. THC in that landscape feels grounding, centering, even euphoric. The same cultivar can either scatter thought or smooth it out, depending on where the body begins. Tolerance is the body's memory at work. With repeated exposure, CB1 receptors retreat deeper into the cell membrane, a process called downregulation, making them harder for cannabinoids to reach. It's not damage, it's self-preservation, the body protecting equilibrium. When someone says they don't get high anymore, it isn't that THC stopped working, it's that the receptors have gone quiet. Step back for a week or two, and they rise again, resensitized. This rhythm of activation and rest explains why the same flower can roar one day and whisper the next. The environment is the hidden co-author. Set and setting decide how the brain frames the same signal. Under bright lights, noise, or stress, CB1 modulation pushes toward vigilance. Thoughts tighten, pulse quickens, perception sharpens to threat. In quiet or safety, the same modulation drifts toward creativity or reflection. Cannabis doesn't override consciousness. It mirrors it. That's why laughter around friends can turn to anxiety in a crowd. The chemistry hasn't changed. The context has. Then comes cultivar composition, the architecture of experience. No two strains are chemically identical, even if the THC label says so. Terpenes steer receptor activity like subtle conductors, limonene and pinin bias. CB1 toward alertness and flow, Myrcene and linalool deepen CB2's calming tone. Trace cannabinoids such as CBG balance excitatory and inhibitory pathways, while THCV trims THC's reach by partially blocking CB1. These interactions decide how long the high lasts, where it sits in the body, and how it resolves. A cultivar isn't a recipe. It's a set of tendencies waiting to interact with you. Across all of it, the internal state and the external scene keep rewriting the outcome. Endocannabinoid tone fluctuates hourly with food intake, cortisol levels, and even circadian rhythm. A morning session can feel clean and linear. The same strain at night may sink into stillness. Cannabis responds to biology's rhythm like a tide to the moon. This is why labeling can never predict experience. A 30% flower can feel dull, while a 16% cultivar hums with precision. Potency prints volume, not fidelity. The receptors, the ratios, the person, and the moment decide the rest. The science of effect lives in that dialogue, the point where chemistry meets circumstance and produces meaning. What cannabis shows us again and again is that the high isn't a command. It's an exchange, plant and person translating each other in real time. Learning to listen is what transforms use into understanding. What cannabis teaches, when stripped of the noise, is that the high is not an escape from the body, but a dialogue within it. Each session is a feedback loop between chemistry and awareness, receptors adjusting, signals rebalancing, perception shifting toward equilibrium. When people talk about cannabis helping them feel like themselves again, what they're really describing is alignment the body and the mind operating on the same wavelength for a moment. That's not magic. That's biology finding rhythm. If you followed this far, thank you for taking that step deeper. Every person who chooses to understand the plant beyond the surface helps rebuild a culture grounded in truth, not trend. This channel exists to make that bridge between science and experience, between data and story. The more we learn, the more we can protect what's real about this plant its complexity, its honesty, and its ability to connect people to themselves and to each other. Your time and support make this work possible. Every view, every share, every conversation keeps cannabis education alive in a world that still wants to oversimplify it. Keep questioning labels, 
Keep noticing your own reactions and keep learning how the chemistry moves through you. That awareness is how we grow, individually and together. This content is intended solely for educational and informational purposes. It does not constitute medical advice, diagnosis, or recommendation for treatment or consumption. Everyone's response to cannabis is unique, influenced by physiology, environment, and dosage. Always comply with the cannabis laws and regulations where you live and consume responsibly. Potency is the volume. Receptors choose the song. And understanding that's the real high. Thank you for watching, for learning, and for growing with me. Until next time, stay curious, stay grounded.